Okay, Thomas Webb, T H O M A S W E B B. Great. And Thomas, where? How old were you during the '64 flood? Let's Just sub see. Subtract fifty. Fifty. Subtract fifty. Fifty. Let's boy, I was uh, 30, 32. Okay. And I'm going to have you um, answer in complete sentences because we're going to take me out of this. So just say, I was, how old did you say you were? I was 32. I was 32 during the 1961 flood. Yes. Doing the, uh, okay. You can go in closer. Okay. Let me just get in closer. We'll get close. She's not in the frame. Okay, good. This is better. <laughs> um, where did you live during the 1964 flood? Where? I lived down there by the church. Right next to the church. At Ruth? At, no, here at Shively. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you said at Ruth. And I was no, at church. Okay. Right, next, right next to the church down here. And, um, let's see. And, and uh, so what uh, happened during the 1964 flood here in Shively? First of all, tell me what was Shively like before the 1964 flood? What did people do for a living? They, most of them worked at the mill or there was, there was uh, mill, dairies. There was dairies around here. They had two or three dairies in town. And they did a lot of truck farming too. What sort of crops did they raise? You know, vegetables, tomatoes, corn, all that stuff, the cucumbers. It's the best food around. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best. Yes. Um, so tell me, how did you know that this wasn't just a regular rainstorm? That this was. Oh, they come in? Okay. We kept checking the river. We kept ch checking the river and it would rain for what, 28 or 30 days in a row? I think it was there when it rained so hard. What were you looking for in, at the river? What, what, how at did the you river? Know? Well, we lived at that same house in 55 and it come up to the steps. In 64, it went an inch and a half in the attic. Wow. In the same house, see. So what did you have to do? When did you know that you should get out? Well, we moved moved everything, and then we I moved the washer and dryer up on the sink and everything. I gotta pause you there. Okay. So Robert, what we're finding is I'm getting a shine that's okay. kind of a reflection off this, on maybe. Okay. So I want to make sure. sure. I don't know if you can lock like, that into oh, yeah, position or something. I think uh, that's what Robert that. was trying maybe to do was not to shine light as much. I was hoping you would get the wind off of him. Here's the That might be what we want to do. That's why I had him there for the wind. Oh, I see. <coughs> the Did you notice that? We were getting these shots of light hitting him in the forehead. No, I didn't see that. Um, well, I'd take that off for a second, Robert. Um, Hey, you look good in this tent. You do. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, you look good from can here, we, anyway. Can I speak? <laughs> I can hear no. you pretty good. So, go ahead and pull that away. Just Wave yeah, yeah, if you want to block the wind, go ahead. I'd, I'd keep it off him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I hear wind now. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. Um, so you knew you you had seen the water come up to come into in. your house. Okay, we're gonna. You're up to the first step. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna let this car go by. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He'll probably be by a hundred times. And um, so you Four. noticed that the water was coming up, and then you moved things up, and then how? when did you know that you needed to get out? We was down there, we kept checking it down by the school, and I think it was raising about six foot an hour, you know, at that time, so we figured we had to get out then, you know. And how did you get all your things to get out? How did we get them out? We hauled them out with a pickup, or I moved stuff up high, but then the water went right over the top of them there, see. So you, um, when you say you move things up high, did you just get them to higher ground? We moved across the track over the house there. Seems like a lot of people talk about the railroad tracks being a place of, you know, the a good place to get things above. That above, yes. Well, the water was all around in here at that flood time. Yeah. It's right here. So. So your um, your neighbors and friends, they all had to get out too. Yes. Was it uh, kind of chaos, or was it pretty controlled? 
pretty controlled. They they moved in different different houses. They moved into houses that were on the other side of the track. Yes, there were some empty houses, and then they moved in with friends. You know, they lived on the other side of the track there, like that. And then when the water receded, they um, their houses were destroyed. It seems like. Yes, they was. Yes. How how you're in the same house you were in then? Were you able to come back and clean it up and fix it up? No, I, we could have fixed it up, but we didn't. It plunked the Maryland's uh, folks, so we didn't want to we didn't want to fix it up. So they sold it to, and they moved it up there, the next uh, up, up there. So that makes sense. Move it up. Yeah, they moved higher. it up higher there because that was dry right up here, a little ways. How did uh, people, um, how were they able to kind of clean up their things because everything was in the mud? Did they have to throw a lot of things away? Yeah, you have to throw a lot of stuff away, yeah. yeah. A lot of mud down and through there, yeah. yeah. What, did, what did the river sound like as it was coming through? Would it sound like a roaring down through there, yeah. And we sat, we stood up here and watched houses. We stood for, right, right down here on the, Looking down here, there was a big like a duplex. The river come up, it went up under the eaves and just picked that house up and took it down the river. Wow. Down there, yes. Yeah, so. Must have sounded incredible with all the debris coming down. Yeah, it was, too. It, was, it was pretty, pretty loud, yeah. And um, what did people, you know, people had to come back and, you know, do the same work that they did before. How did they recover from the flood? How did they recover? Well, I think the Red Cross helped a lot of people and some of them they didn't, you know, they figured it, uh, you know, something like that. Yeah. Seems, we, we've talked a lot about, to a lot of different people about how, um, it was, you know, uh, people in this, in Humboldt County especially, you know, because people were loggers or dairymen yeah. or farmers, that they were good with working their, with their hands, that they probably survived better than people in cities do in similar sort of circumstances. What do you think about that? Yeah, they're probably, probably used to, yeah, used to working there with your hands and everything, you know, yeah. yeah. And they're used to the floods too, see it. Yeah. Because they had a lot of high waters around here, so you had Have you been through a few floods? Yeah, I've been through two, two and then, well, yeah, and then there, there, there's been high water since. Do you worry that there's going to be something like the 64 flood again? Well, it could be, I guess, yeah. Do you feel better about where you're located now than... Well, a little bit, a little bit, not much. I can go across the track right here. So, did the water come up pretty slow, or did it come up really fast? It come up pretty. It come up pretty pretty slow there, to, you know. At the, so you had time. Come right right about the end, and then it just keeps could, could start leaping and you know come jumping up, you know. And um, did people come from out of the area to try and help people in Shively? Yeah, they come in. They come in with helicopters and that. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah. Seems like that um, would be a pretty good sight to see, to see a helicopter coming in if you felt like you were cut off. Yeah, they come out. You could see the stench crick out the other end. That, that washed out. That big culvert, the one that, you know, the turn when you first come in, uh -huh. that big crick washed out. They had a cat there. They pulled me through with a cat. I had a 54 Chevy pickup. And they towed me up through, which I had a half a ton of Presta logs on it. But they towed me up through. Because you couldn't drive up through, you know, they towed it, so. What sort of work were you doing during the 64 flood time period? When, at that time? Yeah. I worked at PL, I, I went right back to work as soon as, as soon as we could get out. Because I think it was, what, three weeks or a month before we could get out of here then. And PL, did they, they lost a lot of logs in the flood? A lot of logs, yes. Lumber and everything. That. What was it they, like? They was flooded too. A lot of their, their output was flooded. A lot of the mills, you know, the motors and everything. Yeah. So when you went back, what was it like in the place that you normally worked at? Did you have a lot of cleanup to do? Yeah, well, they, 
I think they had most of it done by the time I got back. And, and so you were able to go back and just start back right back in in the mill? Yes, yeah. Okay. And um, how, how were things different here after the flood? What was it like? After the flood? Uh -huh. I don't know. It's, uh, I guess everybody trying to put everything back together, you know, like, yeah, cleaning up and everything. So. And your wife's family lost a lot during the flood. Yes, they, yes. They lost their house down there and then uh, about 14 acres went into the river down there. How much acreage did they have before the flood? That's why I say that. That's, oh, they lost it all. Well, there's about three quarters of an acre left down there. I, we planted a garden down there now. That's all that's left. Where did it go? I mean, <laughs> where did it go? Down the river in mud. Just washed off of the bank. Uh huh. So the river's like a different, has a different course now, or? Yes. The, the river moves. 1960 it was way on this side. Now it's way over on the Pepperwood side. It's back and forth. It cuts, cuts the channels. Did somebody on the Pepperwood side gain acreage when the, when? I don't think they gained they didn't anything. Gain anything. No, I don't oh, think so. Okay. I was no. thinking you could go I think across they, and say, wait a minute, that's my land. I think it landed down in Ferndale. Yeah. Down I think there. A lot of things did. Before it went out in the ocean there. Yeah. That would that just had to be something to see all yeah. that going past you here. Yeah. And hearing all See a lot of yeah. But there's what I counted them up the other night, there was thirty one houses here that left and shived here. They're washed, you know, washed away. Did the county tell people after that flood that they needed to move their houses um, To move higher? them? I think they condemned them, you know, they went around condemning the houses and that. A lot of them. Because I heard a story about John Bianchi's house. Yeah. That he had to move up to higher ground, that he used to be down in the bottoms. Yeah. Down in the lower flat. Yeah, his, his house was down there almost uh, what is it, Ewan, Ewan Avenue there? It was almost the end of there where that gate is, where the, the house is there, right in there, in that area. And so he lost a couple houses. He lost a house, I think, in the 55 and the 64 flood. No, just, uh, just I think, I think it just, he lost it in the 64 flood. The other one he just cleaned, he cleaned it up afterwards. Oh, it was flooded. Okay. Then he cleaned it up, I think. But he lost his house in the 64. 64, yeah. And then they moved up there. Then. Moved up top. Okay. Yeah, I think the... Any, any memories about the 64 flood that you want to share? Anything in particular? I think, well, yeah. I think uh, Marilyn's uncle stayed down there in the barn moving stuff up. And then he, he was marooned down there and they had to go down in a boat and get him late at night. Marilyn's dad went down in a boat to get him. Good thing he had a boat. Yeah, he had the boat with the motor and he had to go, he knew the roads, you know, he had to travel around the road so he didn't hook up on the fences to go down there to get him, pick him up. So his wife said, leave him down there, but his father-in-law, that was his, had been his father-in-law, or his, uh, his brother-in-law, said he can't, he can't do it, he's someone to go down and get him, so. And was he up in the hayloft? He was up in a, in a barn someplace, yes. But I think he's carried stuff out of the house, moving it up in the barn, didn't think it'd get up that high. Yeah. Got stuck. Yeah. So. Good thing people had boats, you know. Yeah, they had yeah, the one boat there in here. There. They were, these are fishermen. These are people who like to go fishing on the rivers. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, they. Yeah. They go. Yeah. Lots of. Yeah. And any other memories about the 64 flood? Not too much, no. Yeah. You were able to go Just back to work after three weeks? After about three or four PL. weeks, yes, uh -huh. yes. Yeah, did PL lost a lot, I mean, they lost their a lot of their logs and their lumber. Um, financially, how did PL do? How did they recover from after the flood? I get probably insurance. They probably had insurance, I imagine. You oh, know, right. and that, something like that, yeah. I hope so. And they, they picked up a lot of it down in Ferndale and at the, you know, the, where everything was washed down, the logs and 
lumber and everything went down. Scary times. Tom, do you have any memories of uh, people being plucked off of roofs besides your, besides the person you just talked about? Was there anyone else to stand? Not in, not in Shively, no. He, I think he's the only one that stayed. Uh huh. His wife said he's too stubborn to get out. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, so everyone else got themselves out of here. Before. Yes, they got out. Yes. Um, what about the? Um, you you remember anything about the military helicopter that crashed down in McCann? No. Uh, no, I remember. I remember it crashed, but I, I don't. You know, uh -huh. it was out of here. See. Okay. That's all the cross examination. Okay. <laughs> Any questions, Ted? Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. That was let's... easy, Tom. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. Back put it. Hey, put it. No, come on. No, you did good, Tom. Hey, you get in here now. So we gotta do 30 seconds of oh, yeah. uh, fill-in sound. You so we just we sit here quiet for 30 seconds so we can have some background. Oh, yes. oh I gotta be quiet. Yeah. All of us. <laughs> All right.